Hello and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. So it's been about a month since I did my last uh, lessons learned from knit and crochet. I thought I'd do another one. Um, I will say that this one might not be as long as last time. I had some fun. I just rewatched it because I didn't want to repeat myself too much. Although I, some things I think bear repeating. But talking about knitting and crocheting as the microcosm for the larger world, right? And lessons that we can learn. And I shared with you the last one because I was going through some pretty tough stuff in my life. And I'm still processing it, still going through it. And, and that's when I, I really grab onto knitting and crocheting and the things that bring me joy, you know? And so this one might not be as long, but this one, I thought the what kept coming back into my head, it, these things called lifelines. And so this will not be a, I'm going to draw you out and show you how to use lifelines. In fact, <laughs> spoiler alert, I don't really use lifelines in my knitting all that much, but as a concept, I find them very applicable to life and especially my life right now. So what are lifelines, right? This is going to be very specific to knitting in that it doesn't really work for crochet. Crochet, it's really easy to rip out when you make a mistake and you just pull the yarn back and you get a loop and you stick your hook in and you go. So one of the things I really love about crochet is it's really easy to back out and try again. You don't have to keep track of quite as much stuff. So crocheters might go, what the heck are you talking about? Some knitters are going, what the heck are you talking about? Talking about this stuff. So a lifeline in knitting, sometimes you're keeping track of a bajillion, that's the very scientific term, a bajillion loops on your needle. And if there's something crazy and complicated going on, you can put a lifeline in through your stitches at one spot and keep going. And if you mess up, then you can rip back down. You can pull your stitches back down to the lifeline. It's like, you know, throwing someone a life preserver and you don't have to rip back all the way. You don't have to go back to the beginning and totally start your project over. You can start from a pattern repeat. You could start from um, just a few inches down. I've had a knitter recently who put one in because she wasn't sure if the sleeve separation on her sweater was in the right spot. She wanted to keep going, but what if where it was was right? So she put a lifeline in, in case she had to rip back, she wouldn't have to rip back the whole thing. And I held up this little dental floss. I would not recommend using flavored. That's all I could find nearby, because like I just said, I don't use them that much. Because um, I just, it's, it's a confidence thing too, right? It can help bolster your confidence to have, dental floss is really great for it because it's sturdy and it is distinct from the yarn you're using and it will hold your stitches in place and you can yank on it really hard if you need to, to get your stitches out and back on the needle. If you rip back to this holding your stitches, right? So, and here's my life lesson for myself even. I don't use lifelines a whole lot. And some of that's a confidence thing of, I know I can get it back on the needle. I know I can rip back and I'll just, you know, I might have to rip back a little too far, but that's okay. Hmm. Maybe I should be using them a little more because here's the metaphor I find of lifelines and how I could apply it to my life right now. And some of you might be able to as well. A lifeline is like a safety net. A lifeline is, no again, knowing you don't have to rip all the way back. And sometimes you never need to rip back to it. Sometimes just knowing it's there, you can keep going. And sometimes having it there means when you rip back to it, when you have to fall, there's something there to catch your stitches. There's something there to catch you. And my metaphor for lifelines would be having a support network, having friends, having people that you can reach out to when life is difficult and just how valuable that is. Having people who are there so you don't fall all the way to the bottom of the pit. They catch you and they hold you up and they carry you forward. 
And some of that involves being vulnerable enough, taking the chance. Again, things might not go perfectly. That was in my last video. But taking the chance and knowing that they're going to be there for you. Maybe I should be putting in a lifeline a little more often in my knitting. My cat is now trying to sniff my, my lifeline. Allowing people to help you, allowing the help to be there is the lesson I have learned lately. Being vulnerable and opening yourself up to help, saying it's okay to let people help me. It's okay to use a lifeline. I try to be a lifeline for everybody else in the, the knitting world when they come by my shop and for crochet too. I want to be your safety net. I want to be the buoyancy that carries you forward. I often say I don't want to be a crutch. A lifeline is not a crutch. A lifeline is there just in case you are still doing the work. But if that just in case happens, if you need assistance, it's there for you. So who in your life would you say is your lifeline? I'd love, if you feel comfortable, I'd love for you to share it in the comments. Who is your lifeline? I have discovered, I already knew this, but I have rediscovered in the past month or so, my lifeline are my friends. I have really fantastic friends. And they have been there for me when I had to rip my life down. And I didn't have to rip it all the way down to nothing. And that was pretty cool. And my lifeline is also my family. Some of my family I've been seeing a lot of lately. Some I haven't seen in a really, my more extended family I haven't seen in a really long time. But I know that they're there for me as well. Sometimes we take the, the tactic of, no, I can do this on my own. And sometimes that goes perfectly and sometimes it doesn't. But the attitude of, I can do it on my own, is very noble. And sometimes works really well. But it's okay to rely on others. It's okay to ask for help once in a while. It's okay to have a support system and knowing you have it there can sometimes help you go further. So that's my message for today. It's a pretty short one. This is a pretty short video, but it has been circulating in my head quite a lot. Who is your lifeline? Do you have other resources that can be lifelines to you? Therapy family, friends, finding a group that does things that you like to do. What is your lifeline? Next week, I think I'll try to do some videos on tension or, you know, we'll get back to the normal stuff, but let me know what else you like about knitting and crocheting and what else you would like to see if I can find a life lesson in, because I think there are a lot of lessons for life in knitting and crocheting. So that's all for me this week. Please tune in next week. Oh, before I go, I should mention that for both the Sun Dragon Sideshow, which is our other, our sister channel, which is me and Liz, Liz and me talking about fun things, talking about the projects we're working on, the adventures that we're taking at the yarn shop, especially when we're left unattended. <laughs> For both the Sun Dragon Sideshow and the Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks right here, we have started a Patreon account. If you would like to be a patron of this channel and that one and help us do fantastic things and help the shop survive and thrive and all kinds of stuff, if you'd like to subscribe to us over on our Patreon account, I will put the link right underneath this, but it won't be clickable. I'll put it in the description. It's patreon.com slash sundragon. Even the smallest monthly amount will get you mentions in the credits here, and then the benefits keep rising. If there's things you're wishing we do in our, with our Patreon subscriptions, let us know. We'll work it in if we can. But if you want priority 
or maybe your idea is to get bumped up the list of things that I will make videos about, become a subscriber. I listen to everybody anyway, but you could get more priority and you could help support both the channels and the shop. There's no obligation. You know, subscribing on either of these channels is free. But if you would like to be one of our patrons and get your name mentioned at the end of the video, we already have a couple, you'll see them. A few, I should say, I think we're up to three. <laughs> um, if you'd like to support our work, head on over to Patreon. If you have ideas, you can still put them here, that's fine. And may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. We'll see you next week, bye-bye. What do you think, Abby? Were you listening to any of that? Am I your lifeline or do you just want to bite me? Maybe a little both, huh? Oh, the twitchy tail. <laughs> I'm your lifeline sometimes. Other times I'm your enemy. I know. I bet there's a life lesson in that too.